Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. All right, so I just got back from dyno tuning this engine, and I did a few things different with this build and dyno testing than I usually do. First, you notice the engine isn't painted. I usually paint it before I dyno test it so it's ready to go, but this one was not painted because we have a flat tap of cam. And if the cam did not survive break-in, I'd have to tear it all apart and ruin the paint job. So I'm painting it after. Second, uh, this time tuning this engine, uh, I did, did something different. I went to uh, a friend of mine, Mike Janis, who owns Janssen Automotive in Elma, New York. And uh, Mike is a, an incredible guy. He's been a car guy for well, probably longer than I've been alive. He uh, owns Mike Janis Racing and he also owns Mike Janus engines. He builds racing engines and uh, some of the most incredible engines I've ever seen. He builds engines and superchargers and he sells them to people all over the world. So the guy is one of the best engine guys I know. Um, I can count on him for a lot of things and, and we, he did a great job with this engine. I was actually kind of embarrassed asking him to, to tune a 440 for me when he's used to tuning 3000 horsepower Pro Mod engines. Um, he's a he's a national champion racer, so he uh, he knows his stuff. But he's a great guy, probably one of those down earth guys you'll ever meet. Just like most guys in the in the car uh, engine building uh, business are, car guys are just just that way. But he's a real nice guy. So anyway, first break in. We did the standard thing. We put the engine on a stand, got it started, set the timing real fast, and let it run uh, for about a half an hour, about 2,000 RPM. Let it get up to heat put a little load on it, ran it, and just let it break in the cam. Now after the break-in survived, we knew the cam was going to be fine, so we did our first dyno pull. During the first dyno pull, around 46 or 4800 RPM, the engine started to break up like it was lean. So we shut it down and we changed the jets in the carburetor. We went from 84 to 86 with the jets, re-ran it, and it really liked the richer mixture. It was around 525 horsepower, but again, it was still breaking up around uh, 4,500, 4,800 RPM. So after changing the jets, adding a little timing, trying to fix that problem, it really didn't go away. And uh, we, we determined that the problem was the ignition. Now, this engine, we started out, had a standard distributor in it with the Pertronics unit in there replacing the points and condenser. And, and, and the Pertronics ignition is just like a regular ignition with a standard coil where you have a single point, single discharge, single fire the plug, standard coil, not very hot. And... In a higher performance engine like this, when you start getting over 500 horsepower, the Pertronics units sometimes have a hard time keeping up with the, um, let's say if it's not firing hot enough or it's not firing fast enough on the timing because if you think about it, the rotor that's inside the distributor inside there, that rotor, as it's coming around inside that cap, it's got to be pointing right at the right spot. It's got one shot to fire. And there are a lot of things that have to be uh, exactly right in order for that Pertronics to work. Now, I'm not saying they don't work. I've used a lot of Pertronics in a lot of different engines, and they do work fine. But in this engine, 512 stroker, over 500 horsepower, um, this was simply not keeping up. So, switch to a, a Mallory MSD. The MSD stands for Multi-Spark Discharge. The spark plug fires three times instead of once burning the fuel more completely and burning hotter. With a bigger coil, you're using a spark box, so you get more, more electricity, more voltage to the spark plug, so you get a hotter spark, and it fires three times. We ran it, uh, and then, after changing the distributor, it well, now it was very rich, so we had to go and redo the carburetor. We changed the jets on the carb from the 86, 
which the Protronics unit you know, like the 86, uh, we, we had to went down to actually 82. So dropped considerably on the size of the jets with the MSD distributor. We went back to standard timing, it was about 34 degrees, uh, added a 40, 34 degrees of timing. We ran it, and this is the final dyno pull. After about five or six pulls on the dyno and we got things set to where we wanted them, the final pull, here's the dyno sheet and I'll show it to you. You can see that the engine at around 3700 RPM had 620, 624 foot pounds of torque which is pretty pretty good for, for the 440 and it, it peaked out at 5300 RPM at 515 horsepower. Now I've had similar engines with the same head, I did a 518 stroke or a regular 440 with iron heads. Um, and this is a 512 stroker, so it's uh, in between the, the 440 and the, the 518. 512 stroker with the same manifold. This had a 950 carb. I've had other engines with similar size carb. Uh, the carb is probably just a little bit large for this, uh, but it's not hurting it overall. Uh, now, the owner wanted to get 600 horsepower on it. That was his goal, 600. But um, since it's a flat tappet, it, it's not a roller. You're going to lose a little bit of horsepower there because of the friction and you can't keep the valves open long. You can't open them fast enough, get them closed fast enough, get the flow. So might, that might have cost, I don't know, 20, 30 horsepower. So that uh, 515 could easily have been 530, 540. Uh, the, re the, the other 70 horsepower, it just wasn't there to get. In order to get more horsepower, you have to get more air and fuel in. You have to burn it hot and you have to get it out faster. With a standard head, regular carb, even though we had the MSD distributor, it, it just beyond the, the capability of the engine to produce that kind of horsepower. The compression, we measured the compression, 9.5 to 1, 93 octane fuel, and it's, it, it's very mid-level for a 440 or a 512 stroke or even a 518 stroker. Running on pump gas, 9.5 one compression, Standard carb 950, even even if it was an 850, doesn't matter 800, uh, with 82 jets in there, with the spark plugs, with all the stuff we had, that's really going to max out. It was really within family. We also did a uh, 440 six pack on the same dyno, and it put out roughly the same numbers. Actually, this put out better torque than a six pack did. So this engine performed better than a six pack right in family with other 440s that I've made, other stroker motors, five uh, other 440s, 512 or 518 stroke or whatever they, whatever they are, even with iron heads. Very, very close. Getting over 600 horsepower. Now, if you're, if you're trying to build an engine, you say, I want over 600 horsepower. You are, uh, you're shooting for a number, number one, and it's just a number. Does it matter? When you have a ton of torque on a low wind at uh, 2700 RPM, you dump the clutch at 2700 RPM and this, it's going to melt the tires. The horsepower really is not important. And he's not going to be taking this, it's going in a 69 uh, charger, and he's not going to be taking this engine and revving it up to 4800 RPM every time he drives it, rarely. So is that 600 horsepower number important? It's a good target, it's a good target. Um, it would probably require a little more cam than it's in here. Uh, this cam idles around 1100 RPM, which is, again, a little more aggressive than a standard cam, but you'd have to get a pretty pretty aggressive cam to open these valves and hold them open further and hold them open longer in order to get 600 horsepower out of it. It, it would be tough, and honestly, if you were to do that, it wouldn't be a very streetable or enjoyable engine, I don't think. This is going to be an engine that will run well. It's going to start every time you turn the key. It's going to be a, a, a pleasure to drive. It's not going to overheat. You're not going to have to babysit it. You're not going to have problems. I think it's a, it's a very, very streetable engine for what the numbers show here. Yeah, the numbers didn't show huge horsepower, but like I said, that's just a number. With the torque, with having that kind of torque, you know, 624 foot-pounds, that's a lot of torque. So overall, I'm happy with the engine. Couldn't get any more out of it. Like I said, Mike Janis, he is the engine guy, and we, we spent about um, 
probably eight hours, eight to ten hours working on this engine on the dyno, trying to squeeze every little bit out of there, and we just couldn't get it. So if he couldn't get it, I'm not saying that I added much to the uh, effort other than helping him. He's, he's the, the, the dyno guy, but we talked a lot about what we could do to get more out of it, and that's where it maxed out. So th those are the numbers. That's the dyno sheet. Now that it's back, we'll, uh, I'll make another video. I'll have to go through painting this because painting it's going to be a little tricky with all the components on there, and the owner has some special requests, so I'll paint that in the next video. Thanks for stopping my Pete's Garage.